factor in NA. That's why it's been so close for the top four, but now Never Lucky and the Super Frogs will go head to head. We're gonna see that composition that Never Lucky used yesterday that we saw in EU, but you're going up against Chanimal, an absolute god. This composition is unique to North America with Storm running at first, Nesper and Maldiva, the Destruction Warlock Assassination Rogue, and Super Frogs are looking to rely on it here in game number one, facing down Never Lucky's Windwalker, Death Knight, Miss Weaver compositions. So it's the first time we'll really get to see this matchup play out, but the boys weren't able to take him out either. So we see pressure on Chanimal early on. Iron Bark needs to be enough here. If they overlap with unending resolve, that's going to be devastating. I mean, maybe they have to. Chanimal's just taking a beating. Oh, big, that is a rough start. Big, big damage coming into Chanimal there, but also on the side of Belido is going to have to deflect with that anti magic zone. And now Zach is taking a little bit of the damage. And I want to see them do exactly this. I want to see them punish Zach and try to force him back. As we see Colo activate that way of the crane, though, no Iron Bark available for Cobbs. How are you going to deflect this? This could potentially be the unending result. Chanimal is trying to hold on to it. Beautiful death grip there. Home to Cobbs interrupting that heal. But Chanimal should be able to stabilize for now as that way of the crane threat has faded and Colo didn't combine it with that mana T, I don't believe. So that's going to cost him a big, big chunk of that mana. As we see Cubsy sit down as well for a drink, Colo, though, going to be able to stop that with the Paralyze as they look to churn the pressure, actually, onto Colo. Snuts looking for a nice swap here, followed up by the Bash. Big, big damage here onto Colo, but he does get that Life Cocoon out by the skin of his teeth. I will say just the mana management from Colo is way less efficient than we saw from the European counterpart, Looney, and that's been the big difference between those teams overall, and it could just also be experience. We've seen Looney even in Legion focusing on that Miss Weaver a lot more heavily, and Colo may have been spreading his resources too thin. They definitely got good setup, but they need that late game potential as well if they're going to take down such a formidable opponent as Chanimal. I don't think that the question with Never Lucky is going to be what they decide to play. It is whether or not they've been able to invest time into all of these different counter comps that they do focus on. When we saw Colo able to win with this composition with Zach and Valido, it was very much focused on targeting Mez when he was playing a Death Knight, and he was able to actually make sure with Grapple Weapon they were taking that out of the equation. You you couldn't death strike. You couldn't stay healthy. Chanimal is going to receive a lot of pressure here. Way of the Crane going to be shrugged off by a fear. Chanimal still hasn't had to trade out that unending resolve, and it's going to be Zach who takes a little bit of the pressure here, even though that major cooldown is going to be used to keep him healthy. Their damage and their setup looks good on the side of Never Lucky, but we saw that Looney had a mana lead over Chaz, whereas right now it's pretty much even. At least pressure still in favor of Never Lucky as Chanimal tries to battle back. Dark Soul rolling. He really wants to get some big burst off. Looking for a Chaos Bolt. Gets one onto Valida, but with Anti Magic Shield trades quite evenly. Snuts is trying to pressure down Colo in a solo mission, and I don't think an Assassination Rogue, maybe with a Spell Lock, is Snuts going to be able to take Colo down by himself here behind the pillar? He at least gets Life Cocoon for that effort, which is a lot better than nothing. Cubsy gripped into the stun. But now with double mortal coil, Chanimal defends. Yeah, and Snuts is actually doing so much work in this matchup, consistently swapping to Colo with those kidney shots, applying pressure there, making sure he has bleeds onto Valido as well as Zach. And he also is playing that Flying Daggers Hidden Blades build, making sure that his fan of knives is just doing tons and tons of damage whenever he's hitting multiple targets. As you can see at the bottom of your screen there, now we see a big, big push happening here onto Chanimal. He might have to use his unending resolve here. Cubsy, though, looking to deflect with the Iron Bark. Also, a nice blind sap there onto Colo, playing that Relentless Talent. He's going to deny majority of that way of the crane. And Colo, again, did not combo it with that mana T. So now he's basically running out of mana. Cubs, he still has a lot of mana to work with. Chanimal still has his unending resolve available. Super Frogs have, Super Frogs have a big lead at the moment. They're never lucky. They're over eager. Zack is getting bursted down with Infernos having landed. If Chanimal could sneak in a Chaos Bolt, it could snag him a kill. Multiple members at critically low Hell Chanimal goes for the Chaos Bolt. Anti Magic Zone and Life Cocoon soak the hit and keep Colo alive, but his mana is just so tapped. Zack now dips low. Touch of Karma redirects. We could see another ward potentially from Chanimal. Wants to hold on to it for the Maledict push. Ring of Peace knocking Chanimal out in the open. He's getting bursted potentially anyway. Never Lucky can just overwhelm the Super Frog. Zack's still in the back foot. Snuts on target. Oh. Nice kick on a Colo. Good setup here by the team of the Super Frogs. All three targets in tons of trouble. Colo manages somehow to struggle through it. 
can at least keep them alive, but for how much longer can he really do it? Ducking around the corner. Zach catches a couple of vivifies. Valido soaks the hit with any magic shield. They're spreading their defense effectively, but with kidney shot secured. Valido once again carries. Good interrupt. Cola flails to stay alive. If he can somehow get mana for a way of the crane, they could run Channel over. Colo needs to live to that point. Yeah, and now we see again the Iron Buck from Cubsy preemptively placed onto Channel, but it might not be enough as he's taking huge damage. Nice follow up stun there onto Cubsy as well, but Cubsy should be able to deflect because of that preemptive Iron Buck. Now Zach taking the brunt of the damage, caught up in that kidney shot, Sid. Huge chaos bolt. Zach portals out of line of sight. Ducking for cover, but Valido's now left out alone in midfield. Chanima looks to set up and close this. Both healers basically tapped on mana and completely tapped on defense. Zach needs a few more seconds. Valido once again soaking huge hits for the team with that icebound fortitude. Dampening having just stepped foot in the arena. Cubsy's looking for a drink. They have to stop that. Colo's blind breaks. Critical mistake here by the side of the Super Frogs. Maybe an opening for Colo. Way in the crane gets activated. Touch of Karma redirects the damage. This is going to be a huge hit on Chanimal. Even though Zach is very low on health, the damage could just overwhelm Chanimal. Has never lucky battle to stay in it. Comes in needs five more seconds. I don't think he's going to get it. He gets stunlocked. Chanimal defends once again. Double Mortal Coil isn't going to be enough. Chanimal lives to the Iron Bark. Zach gets life cocooned. Both teams continue trading. But there's now once again nothing for Chanimal. Nothing for Zach and it's a game of chicken who is going to run first Zach is just running headlong in with that touch of death but he's so low Colo tries to make it over catch one heal but it's not shadow steps to Colo to kill Zach around the corner Super Frogs put a point on the board and this composition all the way up to fourth that, that really is their goal to try to make that giant leap but currently it is the Super Frogs that are getting that leap in this series yeah and there's not that big of a difference between eighth and fourth it's only a 30 two point difference so if they can do well in this tournament they can absolutely make that link leap and be in that top four which is going to be ultra important nice little setup here early on coming in from never lucky channels gets bursted down and what we're really looking for in this game is how aggressive is colo going to play is he just going to use the way of the crane on cooldown is he going to really pick his moment right now never lucky actually has a lot of pressure rolling yeah, and we see Colo immediately activating that way of the crane. Do not combo with the manatee again. Big, big damage though coming in here. He activates his, uh, his personal defensive cooldown as well, so he can kind of negate that swap. Colo is going to be forced to use his human racial, and he actually went in there and burned quite a bit of cooldowns. Had one big, beefy chaos ball from Channel Connects. We see big damage here from Channel counter pressuring Zach as well, dropping fairly low here. But as Channel seems to be the one taking the brunt, brunt of the damage, he's going to activate that cataclysm try to counter pressure Zach back, but Zach is, just seems to be unrelenting with that pressure. And if one of these Chaos Bolts sneaks through from Channel, we could see a touch of Karma potentially coming out very early on in this match. Yeah, Snuts realizing he needs to help Channel's out here, get a little pressure. Like you said, Zach and Valido, they have a lot of self-healing and interrupts available for Channel, so him generating pressure by himself isn't necessarily that easy. So if Snuts just sits on Colo, I don't think they're going to be able to get a whole bunch done, but I do really like when Snuts makes the swaps on Colo. So gets a kidney shot when Colo moves in. That's a great opportunity to really punish him. Cubsy looking for some mana. Colo shuts it down, and Colo's been doing a little bit better job in this matchup, conserving that mana, and that's something that Never Lucky definitely has in their favor. They could potentially get a massive mana lead. And Zico, one of my big questions for you, we talk about the Way of the Crane. We know how strong it was yesterday. It was all about those Way of the Crane goes, trying to close out the game as quickly as possible. In this particular matchup, how do you want to see this powerful offensive and defensive ability used? Well, I want to see the Iron Bark of Cubsy, like right now, completely forced. Then I want to see Channel drop fairly amount, Ooh. fairly low, and then I want to see Colo push in for the Paralyze. Ooh. Go for the Way of the Crane. Nice knock there with that Ring of Peace onto Channel. He's actually going to get rooted down there as well. Channel again, though, playing with that Reflect. Going to reflect one of those Maledict Trinkets. Going to save him a lot of the pressure. Colo now going for the Paralyze into the Leg Sweep. This could be a beautiful opportunity to activate that Way of the Crane, but Cubs is going to deflect with his Trinket. Channel, but not out of the woods yet, as we see his Gladiator's Medallion Procked, and there we go. Colo gonna be using a way of the crane, but Snuts again deflecting with a nice blind stab. Zach, though, taking big, big pressure. Touch of Karma might not even be enough. He might need to port out of there completely. Colo not getting a single global up with that way of the crane. Zach no longer has that touch of Karma. Colo caught up in the kidney shot. We see the Maledict Trinket flying to Zach. He could potentially just go down all the way right here. Another Maledict Trinket flying in behind that pillar as Zach might be battling for his life, oh and he will goodness. go down. 
Oh. So I, I feel like Zach way overstayed his welcome in that situation. He could have just to multi-class and to try to get enough points to make it to the land. But if they don't manage to pull off this victory here, they're going to have a rematch against Method Orange to try to get to the grand final. And I'm actually a little surprised for Never Lucky. Zach actually in the last map was the main target, but he's actually opted to go with um, out the Fortifying Elixir, which is a bit curious as it is such a solid amount of defense available for him. Early on, Never Lucky push in. They get the triple leg sweep onto Chanimals, Nuts, and Cubsy. Good amount of pressure here, but Chanimals responds with his Infernals, looking to really counter pressure Never Lucky. I mean, Chanimals is under huge pressure right now by Never Lucky. Deflects with the double Mortal Quill right at the final second, now looking to counter aggress, trying to find the target. Nuts is going after Colo. Chanimal is trying to fear up the DPS and slow down the assault. Ring of Peace misses a bit there. They can easily go in and out of the room. I was really hoping that we'd see a double Ring of Peace and just pin Chanimal against the wall during the Infernals, and that way he can't counter aggress and just run him over. But we haven't seen that double Ring of Peace strategy just yet from Never Lucky. In the meantime, momentum swings in favor of the Super Frogs. Colo trades, but now Zack is left open. He has to exchange Touch of Karma to stay in the fight. Lido still has options. Colo gets feared away, and this is the thing that I love about Chanimal, is even though the pressure is all on him, he still finds opportunity to get out key spells. These Chaos Bolts alongside that smoke bomb could have been devastating. Zack manages to barely escape. Yep, Chanimal's with a great positioning. Allows Snuffs to get off a lot of damage with that Flying Daggers build. Finally, it looks like Never Lucky. They realize this is maybe not a favored position for them, as all three members still trying to run down Chanimals. Cubsy actually potentially sitting down for a drink, recovers all of his mana, and that is a great spot to be in for the Super Frogs. Cola once again, where the crane gets activated, but he's just throwing away his mana. This is definitely a risky strategy. It could pay off, but Zack really low. No touch of karma. Doesn't have the defense of the fortifying elixir. Diffuse magic already used. Complete retreat here from uh, Never Lucky. Yeah, they need to reset, wait for defensive cooldowns before making another push because if they try to right now, Super Frogs will punish Shirley and execute this series 3 0, which is highly unexpected in the matchup that we were predicting, having seen the performance from the European region. Snuts gets bursted down in a swap by Never Lucky. Trades out that faint, starting to slowly recover, but Cubsy regenerated full mana. Now there is no late game advantage either for Never Lucky. They will have to win in an overwhelming push. And I'm almost wondering if it's a better strategy for them to just attack Snuts around the pillar, wait until dampening and make a big push like we saw against Swapsy's Destruction Warlock, because right now things are falling apart. This is a, a bit of a miscommunication there for Never Lucky. Colo charges in with the way of the crane. Zach ports out a line of sight across the map, so definitely not ideal offensive pressure there from Never Lucky in that situation. But now with the triple leg sweep, this is the kind of damage. These are the setups that we want to see. Chanimal's getting low, getting bursted down. Double leg sweep, that was nicely done. Good communication by Zach and Colo. Chanimal getting low, Iron Bark, unending resolve, everything committed. Chanimal's looking for counter pressure. Anti-Magic Zone gets dropped out by Valido to really shut that down. Cubsy tops him off, but what a scary moment that was for Super Frogs. All right, Never Lucky, they've still got damage and Big push potential here against the Super Frogs. They're on match point. They have to swing three in a row. Will they be able to pull it off is the question. Super Frogs have great pressure, great setup as we see a kill attempt here onto Zach. Colo denies it, so Snuts is going to switch targets, going after Colo in the back line while Chanimal builds pressure in other places. Maledict attempt here on Zack, multiple incoming, Diffuse Magic well-timed on Zack's part to remove that healing absorption effect, and now this next way, the Crane really needs to get a kill. Colo needs to wait for that Manatee. Chanimal knows that it's coming. He's trying to retreat even further away, out position, and this way Colo will stack up for that Flying Daggers build. I like this repositioning from Chanimal, but in the meantime, Never Lucky pulled the trigger first, pulling Cubsy into the fight. He opts to use that Glider's Medallion knowing their defense is quite limited. This could be the final push of the game from Never Lucky if they want to stay in the upper bracket. Do they have enough damage to take down Chanimal with this push? The crowd control looks good, but Colo gets feared on the crane. Chanimal gets to safety and Chanimal's positioning just looks immaculate. And it always is. Chanimal, such an all-star for this roster on the Destruction Warlock. Colo almost completely tapped on mana at this point. Zach's got to be feeling a little bit scared too. His superior on the Chanimals. Life Cocoon finally connects from Colo to keep Zach alive, but still another eight seconds on that touch of karma. And until then, Zach is increasingly vulnerable. Incapacitate on Cubsy. Still never lucky. Looking to find pressure on the Chanimals, but there's just so much momentum for Super Frogs right now. Colo is really going to struggle to recover. That flying daggers built from Snuts is developing huge momentum for the team. 
Zach has to exchange his final defense, maybe go all out for a kill, but then he gets feared on it. Chanimal knows exactly how to deny every single push that Never Lucky throws his way. Cubsy still with a significant mana lead. Snuts is just training down Colo. Ring of Peace at least protects Colo, maybe for a bit, but Chanimal's is finally getting bursted. He's trying to counter pressure with the Dark Soul. It's a game of chicken here. Who is going to end up running away first? Snuts is coming back to the battle. Colo might go for a drink, but Zach is too exposed. They dropped the smoke bomb. The Super Frog's trying to close this out. Zach portals to safety, but how safe is it? Snuts closes in to try and get the kill, interrupting Colo's heals. Zach is still low on health. Snuts has pressure on multiple players. Chanimal is 1v1ing Valido in midfield, and it's not looking too good for Never Lucky. No, nope, Snuts moves in. Kidney shot on Colo, still trying to take down Zach. Zach trying to survive, incapacitate paralysis onto Snuts. Colo low, really no mana left, but he does. He uses the way of the crane. Evasion. Can deny him? Evasion denies all of the healing. Colo has to find a target, but he just can't. Life Cocoon gets traded out full blind by Snuts. Colo trinkets out. Snuts basically forcing every single thing Colo had left in that exchange. He gets the trinket. He gets the uh, Life Cocoon. He gets away of the crane. Colo with really running on fumes. Vendetta gets used onto Zach. Zach, no touch of Parma. Another 10 seconds. Can they take him down? Even Cubs, he's getting into the fight with some solar wrath. Zach running away. He has to retreat. Only needs to keep him alive for just a little bit longer. Never lucky does manage to stay alive. Staying alive, but definitely not getting aggressive whatsoever. And now the defense for the Super Frogs has rotated back up and available. Cubsy looks like he's sneaking away to regenerate mana just to secure this and close it out if it does go longer. And he's got a significant lead now over Colo. Snuts is the target. Potentially they can take him out. I'm very surprised that we haven't seen swaps to hit Snuts earlier on in the fight. That rogue is much more likely to go down than the Destruction Warlock. Never lucky. They look cheeky in their play, but their defense and their late game potential is just lacking in the tournament today. They're going to want to clean it up if they end up going down to the lower bracket to face against Method Orange. Snuts shadow stepping out defensively, realizing he's vulnerable. Instead, it's just going to kite Zach and Valido as long as he can, and hopefully Chanimal can develop some pressure. Full fear secured. Infernals have landed. Chanimal taking this game into his own hands here. Anti-Magic Zone will trade, but Zach gets Mortal Coiled out of it. Colo opts to use a life cocoon, but now Colo has limited defense. Snuts doesn't seem to Carries is using kidney shot to stall, trying to get that mana advantage really in his favor. All three targets low on health. No mana in sight for Colo to way of the crane, and Super Frogs continue to squeeze their grip. Yeah, never lucky though. They've been doing a good job. Colo with no mana has been able to keep his team alive, but like you said, there's just not that much pressure. Canimal still with the unending resolves can be feeling healthy. Now a kidney shot secured on Valido. He responds with the icebound fortitude and will trade evenly to stay alive. Nuts now turning his attention on to Zach as he rolls away and Super Frogs are doing a great job denying these kills but they're just not actually finding the killing blow in this matchup but potentially could only be a matter of time we are at 18% dampening Colo's actually been regenerating mana at this point with how defensive Neverlucky's playing he's really not having to throw out too much healing saving some mana potentially looking for one more push with that way of the crane. This is what I thought they should do just throughout the entire game. Just attack Snuts if he overextends, line of sight the Warlock, then deep dampening, push the Warlock over. I mean, that's what we saw happen in Europe as well. So it's just a safer route, but it's never lucky. Don't want to play for the safer route. They just like getting in there and trying to get a kill. But in the current meta, I just don't think that play style is going to pay off. Snuts getting a lot of flying daggers, fan of knives. They grip Chanimal behind the corner, trying desperately to get an unending resolve with this push. If they are unable to get that defensive cooldown, that it is really starting to look grim because the mana lead is so much in favor of Cubsy. Super Frogs on match point. Never lucky need a kill right here and right now. And Chanimal gates to safety. Zack and off pursuit with the Fist of Fury flying. Iron Bark denies the kill there. Now Valido getting pressured. Colo dips low. Unending resolve exchanged Ooh. aggressively, but Ring of Peace locks Chanimal in the room, potentially out of line of sight. No Cubsy is able to heal from his current position, but still the unending resolve is now down. Triple stun secured. It's looking good for Never Lucky to punch back in this fight and Chanimal what are you gonna do there's nothing left for him to stay alive Cubs he can't keep him up and never lucky managed to stay in it by just slowing down staying calm after this map regardless of what happens here I think never lucky are going to be picking uh, potentially the blades edge arena and I, th I think that could potentially be very very good for them all right a potential idea of what could happen in a game five but never lucky needs to extend the series that far first otherwise the super frogs are going to leap straight into the grand final
All right, here we go, everybody. We're in the upper bracket. Never lucky. This is the day of Colo's revenge. Will he actually get to enact on it is now the question. They're already down two games facing the Super Frogs, and the Super Frogs have strategically set themselves up well here with this broad composition. I think the Shadow Priest is the best of both worlds between the consistent damage that the Destruction Warlock may have brought and the burst that the Elemental Shaman could have brought to the table. It's definitely the safest pick and the best route to victory for the Super Frogs. But still, we saw the boys able to pull off victory in this same disadvantaged situation. So we cannot completely count Never Lucky out just yet. Ooh, I, I actually really like this build from Wealthy Man. We don't normally see mages drop their Water Elemental, but I think in this particular matchup, it's very likely that Snuts is the main target. So what Wealthy Man's decided to do, Yes, he's basically loaded himself up with every single Frostbolt buffer in the game. For Azurite Trace, he is going with the uh, uh, Tunnel of Ice as well as the Flash Freeze, and he has the Lonely Winter, which is going to make it so he doesn't have a Water Elemental, but increases the damage of his Frostbolt Ice Lens and Flurry by 25%. So if he can basically sit back and turret, he's going to be able to do a lot of damage. But if Never Lucky punish him and they train him down, his damage output will be severely limited. I'm really curious to see what Snuts can get done if he's left open in the meantime. Time. Instead, Never Lucky switched their attention to him, bursting him down. Vampiric Embrace, good exchange of cooldowns by the team of Super Frogs, pairing that immediately after the use of Iron Bark so that the utility is spread evenly, and there will always be an answer for every push that Never Lucky throws their way. Having gotten that defense, we now see Never Lucky retreat away, pulling Wealthy Man around the corner, but as they pull him in, he activates Temporal Shield, so it's soaking up all this damage, heals him back up quite easily, and even though it was a good swap that he gets away and Zack gets bursted. He cannot afford to make a mistake like portaling nowhere in the future. A push like that in dampening definitely would be a kill. Colo falling behind. Super Frog's looking solid here in game four. Definitely I'm trying to figure out what build Snuts is playing if he's playing the shadowy apparitions with the auspicious spirits and it looks like that is what he's going to be going after so gets a little bit of instant cast damage when shadow or pain does crit he's going to get additional damage from that especially if a vampire can brace uh, vampire can brace or vampire touch sorry is on the target um and i think both snuts and wealthy man really looking for high damage builds and it's going to force never lucky to run and hide in these matchups really force them to just play it patient look for grip kills because if they do play on the open on Tolveron Arena with the build Snuts and Wealthy Man are playing they are going to be able to easily take them down. Yeah the double caster threat definitely a good strategic choice by the Super Frogs here on game number four as they look to just close the series out three to one. Cubsy needs to keep his eye on his mana into the late game. Colo on that Mistweaver will outdo him unless he is able to find opportunities to drink and regenerate mana. Wealthy Man laying Blizzard on the corner of the pillar so what the enemy team tries to retreat he can maybe sneak in an extra Frostbolt. I like Snuts' positioning on the opposite side of the pillar so that this way if Never Lucky try and retreat at least Snuts or Wealthy Man will be able to attack. Even one at a time is better than no one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the math checks out. <laughs> the only problem is, is when Snuts is on one side and Wealthy Man's on the other, that leaves Cubsy in sort of an awkward position where he has to choose which one of them he's going to be healing up. Luckily for Cubsy, he's feeling confident to push in, get behind the pillar, and heal both of them up. Now Zack forced to retreat once again as they're looking for a push onto Snuts. Nice double fear, setting up some damage. Colo in midfield, potentially looking for a way of the crane, but could just get polymorphed up by Wealthy Man. And once again, Never Lucky, they're forced to retreat. Yeah, never Lucky, though, of managing their mana much better. If Colo had had this mana management earlier in the series, maybe they could have just 3 0 Super Frogs. So definitely that's going to be a thought going through Never Lucky's mind here as they desperately try to crawl back in this series to reverse sweep the Super Frogs, gripping Snuts into the battle, double stun lock combination doesn't net them any defense. This is a bit disrespectful on the side of the Super Frogs and disappointing for Never Lucky to say the least. Yeah, no question about it. Polo throwing out the life cocoon before he goes into the polymorph. And there's not a lot of threat that Never Lucky will go down with this positioning, at least not until later on, but Never Lucky, they're gonna have to decide which target do they want to go after. So far, it seems like they're just trying to find opportunities on whoever's closest. So it's the closest wizard strategy, as some players call it. Whatever one of these two casters is closest, that's the one that they will attack just so they don't have to compromise their position. And I don't mind that, Cubsy and Stealth. Potentially, he needs to be careful though. If he gets gripped in and caught into a leg suit, that's definitely an opportunity for Never Lucky to just all in him. But Cubsy being an expert druid, 
he knows the threat and he doesn't want to have any part of it. Wealthy Man now caught into a full leg sweep. Snuts is going to have to try to find some counter pressure. Wealthy Man blinks away. And now at 2% dampening, things are going to start ramping up very quickly for these teams. And Ever Lucky, they're not going to be able to afford to just sit and hide behind the pillar. Oh, Snuts gets pinned against the pillar. Things are getting riveting for the Super Frogs. Triple Psychic Extreme by Snuts <laughs> to try and deflect. Will it be enough? It looks like it's going to be with Cubsy's Iron Bark. And we'll finally answer the question if the Super Frogs are indeed unhoppable. <laughs> Unhoppable. I get it. Instead, it's unstoppable. Stop throwing things, Rich. Rich. <laughs> Wealthy Man getting bursted down. Temporal Shield was used. Looks like Snuts is going to be able to save him with that life grip. Definitely, definitely important for Super Frogs in terms of defense. If Wealthy Man ever gets caught without a shimmer, he's behind the pillar. Snuts can use the leap of faith to grip him to safety. And I mean, that's going to pay off dividends for Super Frogs. They don't really get any defensive cooldowns traded out, even though that was a nice attempt by Never Lucky. Still just hiding behind the pillar. Colo, like you said, he's been managing his mana quite well. Cubsy isn't falling behind. He's been going for drinks when he really needs to. And both of these teams really don't want to commit in this matchup. These grip stun pin at the pillar strategies from Never Lucky are cute, but you need to be deadly, not cute in a tournament setting. Will they have enough damage later in the match to net themselves objectives like ice block or dispersion is the question. So far, it hasn't been enough damage and dampening now at 11%. Cubsy has maintained his mana for the late game. I would like to see Wealthy Man and Snuts split up. They actually swapped to Colo, catching him a bit out of position. Anti-Magic Zone of Valido saves him. Cubsy pauses his health with a Cyclone and then sneaks away into the room to drink, not overextending. Realizing the enemy team may try and retreat, so he wants to try and take advantage of that moment of defense to regenerate mana, and I think he was able to. He's back to full. Definitely solid for the Super Frogs here in game number four. Yeah, Cole sitting down, trying to recover some mana. Doesn't really have any opportunity. The Wealthy Mana has Touch of Death on him right now. This is a scary situation for the Super Frogs because he might have to commit the Iron Bark. Still opting not to. Silence now on Colo. Zack getting bursted down as Life Cocoon gets traded out by Colo to keep Zack afloat as he pushes into the midfield. Wealthy Man blinks away. And now, never lucky, they have overstayed their welcome. So that's with the beautiful mind control bringing Valido back into the open. And these situations oh. where never lucky they make a push, it's going to be becoming more and more difficult for Colo to actually recover. Now another swap on a Colo. Cubsy moving in, gets the bash. What is Colo going to trade out? He ports away, dispels himself. It should be just fine. Yeah, will Never Lucky choke or will the Super Frogs croak? We'll find out here as Never Lucky desperately want to battle this series back and just secure a spot in the Grand Finals and sit comfortably there rather than have to play out a potential fatiguing series against Method Orange. In the meantime, Snuts secures triple crowd control for the team and tries to set up burst fake casting multiple interrupts. Snuts MVP really for the team of Super Frogs, multi-classing his strategy, his communication, his playmaking capability. I am more than ecstatic to see Snuts' return to the tournament setting. He could definitely be a top contender for North America to take out Europe in the spring finals later this year. They're looking solid and well-rounded. I think even if the meta changes, they'll still have an answer. Never lucky gripping Snuts in and trying to catch him off guard. Dampening's pretty high, Snuts. He's trying to get away without using dispersion. Iron Bark appears to be enough for now as Snuts makes his getaway. Uh, he fades, and I think at this point, Snuts is going to start playing a lot more cautious, but all three members of Never Lucky, they're moving in. If they can get dispersion, Snuts could be in a lot of trouble, but he manages to escape. Full polymorph on Nicolo. Life Cocoon gets dropped out. Now, once again, Never Lucky, they have to retreat, but the thing is, for Snuts, he still has his trinket rotating back up, dispersion available, fades going to be up, and they didn't really get any of those major defensive cooldowns they needed to. Mm, Colo portaling back. What I've noticed here is that when Never Lucky makes a big three-man push, right at the end of it, we see Super Frog switch to Colo and try and burst him down. Now that they've done that a couple of times, I feel like Colo should be ready for it so he can preemptively activate the fortifying elixir, reduce damage on himself, increase his max health, and make it much less likely that he dies. But so far, they haven't gotten any of the major objectives. No void shift and no ice blocks. Never lucky, really. This is the point where they should be starting to get those major objectives so that they can get a kill at the 40 or 50 percent dampening mark. Snuts is positioning so that Zack has to chase him into that wizard corner. This is exactly where Wealthy Man wants them. Look at all three members out in midfield. Right for the pickings here of Wealthy Man. Zack gets bursted, but he's trying to race for a kill as well with Touch of Death, amplifying his damage. Whoa! Snuts needs to be careful. Dispersing on very low health. This is going to be a game of chicken and towards the end of deep dampening. Who's going to fall first? It's anyone's match. 
Yep, they did get the dispersion from Snouts, but it's only a minute and a half cooldown, so that rotates up rather quickly, and Zach committed quite a bit there. The Diffuse Magic, Touch of Karma, Touch of Death, basically everything. Now comes into the Incapacitate. They're looking to take down Snouts. He trinkets out. He's looking to make a getaway. Zach getting counter pressured away by Wealthy Man. Wealthy Man almost has that very powerful cooldown. Icy veins up in 14 seconds, and that's really when he's going to be able to solo the team. With the build he's playing, his Frost Bolts are going to hit very hard if he can get a Flurry proc and shatter that damage. Bash now on to Colo. Valido and Zach really going to have to think twice about just leaving Wealthy Man alone, but Snuts really is the best kill target for them at this point, so it's kind of do or die. I mean, he is for roughly 38 seconds or so, and then after that, it's a complete reset. Whereas getting the Ice Blocks from Wealthy Man would be a lot more valuable as they're a five-minute cooldown. So I would say that Super Frogs are in a position to just clean up this series and walk away with it. Perfectly timed Psychic Screen by Snuts. Denies the way of the crane. Colo kind of walking into that and asking for it. Now polymorphed on. This is devastating for Never Lucky. Zach is just getting obliterated. Touch of Karma may not even be enough. Snuts is going to race against it to try and find a kill. Diffuse Magic keeps Zach afloat a little bit longer, but how much so is the case? Basically everything traded. They try and go for the kill. Two seconds away from that dispersion. Snuts dips low, but dispersion rotates back. Healing Snuts back into the fight. Zach has got to make a choice. Does he make a push with no defense, or does he just chill at the pillar for deeper dampening? It, it's still too close to call. Polo is actually missing out on a lot of healing. He's not replacing his Serpent Jade statue. It's still behind the pillar at their original hiding spot, and because of that, he doesn't get that additional soothing mist from that talent, missing out on a lot of free healing that's uninterruptible. So potentially that's one of the reasons why Neverlucky has had to run and hide a lot more in this matchup. Snuts still taking some burst damage, but looking healthy. Still with Trinket and Void Shift. We really want to see Snuts hold on to his Trinket so he can always pair that with the Void Shift. Valido getting low. And this is the point of the match as well, is where Valido is very vulnerable to this damage. He's not going to be able to heal himself up for nearly as much with Death Strike. Zach getting low as well. Colo really doesn't have many tools left, and I think Zach. This is the final moment of the game. He gets behind the pillar at 1% health, keeping himself alive with Vivify, but all damage, all control with Super Frogs. This is looking like a KO, and Super Frogs manages to close out this series and make their way to the feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up one and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history. The longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.